Let's talk about what's changing with Copilot extensibility. It was at Build in 2023 where Microsoft first mentioned the possibility of plugins come into the then yet to be released Microsoft 365 Copilot. And while this extensibility framework has grown to become, in my view, one of the most impressive parts of Microsoft's business AI offering, it has also become pretty complicated. But hidden inside the recent rebrand that saw custom Copilots and Copilot plugins become agents, there was more under the surface that will make Copilot extensibility easier to understand, easier to build, and offer a better experience to users. Let's dig in to understand the changes. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. Microsoft 365 Copilot is an impressive product, but no matter the type or scale of your business, there are undoubtedly work processes or data sources that are essential to your success that Microsoft's Copilot AI doesn't work well with out of the box. And that's where Copilot's extensive extensibility potential comes into play, giving you the ability to connect it to data outside of Microsoft 365 and customize how it works to be more hands-on with the way your processes or systems work. But there have been two big problems with Copilot extensibility. First, it has been a pretty complicated set of products to wrap your head around encompassing flows, prompt actions, connectors, and conversational plugins on the low-code side, along with completely separate custom Copilots. And then there's graph connectors for bringing in more data, uh, and then message extensions for pro-code developers. The basics of what you could do where would differ based on how you were building your extension and where you were pointing it. All of these features were in different places in their release life cycle, with many only in private preview. And often the day-to-day -day usability was really pretty convoluted and complicated. And second, if you actually managed to dig through all the options to build something you wanted to use, it often wasn't a very good experience. Your list of available plugins could quickly become a confusing mess, and it was really hard to understand when and why something would make its way to this list. But second, once you activated a plugin, it was then completely down to the Copilot orchestrator to choose to use it, and often it was pretty hard to make it do this consistently. This has ended up in a situation where over the course of the last year, I've delivered lots of sessions to clients overviewing Copilot extensibility, but framed as something to keep an eye on for the future, rather than a set of tools ready for mass deployment today. The exception to this has been graph connectors, but that's because they are a tool that predates Copilot and haven't really been reimagined with just AI extensibility in mind. For most organizations, this hasn't been a significant encumbrance up to now. The right adoption plan has been to establish strong foundations in using Microsoft 365 Copilot and start playing with opportunities from extensibility around the edges. However, if 2024 was the year of getting used to Copilot, if AI is to have the impact on organizations that's been hyped and businesses are to stick with Microsoft's solution, 2025 needs to be the year of extending Copilot. So it is potentially with this reality in mind that Microsoft has made a set of changes that seek to make extensibility more accessible, more understandable, and far easier to use. Let's look at what's changing. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and leave a comment to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. With the switching of naming from co-pilots to agents, also comes a significant simplification of this extensibility platform. Your choice of paths are between building a declarative agent that works as an extension of Microsoft's base M365 Copilot technology, and a custom agent, which can operate outside the context of Microsoft 365 Copilot, doesn't rely on Microsoft 365 Copilot licensing, and can be built using Microsoft's technology stack or any other AI tooling you want to bring to the table. Both capabilities, declarative agents and custom engine agents, have routes accessible to both low-code creators and pro-code developers, so no longer does how you want to build fundamentally alter the options for what you can build, 
which was previously the case when considering Copilot plugins built in Copilot Studio versus message extension plugins built with ProCode. The only extra option outside of this remains graph connectors, but as I've already highlighted, these entirely predate Copilot and offer a mechanism to extend the Microsoft Graph to index external data, which in turn is made available to Microsoft 365 Copilot or can be consumed directly as a data source by agents you create. What this means is that certain existing Copilot extensibility options will be disappearing. Teams message extensions will no longer be a route for Copilot extensibility to be replaced with custom engine agents, or in some cases, probably by the new capabilities of declarative agents. Direct access to plugins and extensions in BizChat will also be changing in favor of the new model of accessing declarative agents, where you will just at mention the agent you want to gain benefit from in your chat. Microsoft is working on a transition plan and route forward for those who have built message extension plugins, which will involve standing up custom engine agents in their place using open API plugins to consume the API or external service the message extension had been built on top of. The low code plugin options we've had, flows, prompts, connectors, etc., will still be an important part of Copilot extensibility as after all, these continue to be important building blocks across Power Platform, but instead of publishing them to Microsoft 365 Copilot and accessing them directly within the chat, you will add them as capabilities either to extend the knowledge or skills of declarative copilots, which will orchestrate their use based on the natural language instructions you give them. It isn't clear just yet whether all existing Power Platform assets that could have been used in Copilot plugins will automatically be surfaced as available actions in the various agent builders, or whether for some at least, there's going to be more work to do. As it stands, I do not see my existing Power Platform based Copilot plugins as actions in my new agent builder interface in Copilot Studio, but it's early days yet. This change to how plugins are surfaced is huge, as it potentially fixes one of the biggest problems with the Copilot extensibility framework the complexity of ensuring the right plugins are activated within a chat and then used by the Copilot orchestrator before being able to get anything done. We now have an experience that is in terms of complexity, very similar to ChatGPT's GPT Builder, but connected with all the capabilities of Power Platform or other ProCode tooling and your Microsoft 365 data. This works right the way down to giving your users starter prompts for your specific agent so it's really clear how to use them. With so much going on in the world of productivity AI, working out how to get the best from this technology can be both time consuming and confusing. I help businesses like yours with their Copilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tools, to technical advice with their implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extending their capabilities across your operations. Whether you're just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I will help you to maximize your return from investment in AI. Check out the links down below and get in touch to start working with me. What's also huge is the simplification of creating agents into a GPT builder-like experience. Soon, if not already, you'll start to see a create agent button in your biz chat, which takes you to a neat natural language driven agent builder, giving you many of the common options available in Copilot Studio. When a GPT builder like this came to Copilot Pro several months ago, it's now left again by the way, I commented on how that experience needed to come to the extensibility capabilities for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And with this advance, Microsoft has delivered a very similar streamlined experience. You can start with something simple like this, an agent to answer HR policy questions. Behind this is simply a set of natural language instructions and access to a SharePoint site that houses the relevant HR policies. But once this agent is shared and in use across your organization, you can continue to update it and continually publish it as you might a Power Apps app. Perhaps you want to add actions to allow users to check their time off balance. Instead of publishing a new action or plugin directly to Copilot, you just add the capability to your agent, update its instructions and perhaps its starter prompts and it's ready to go. 
This makes far more sense as a workflow than what we previously had. And because you can import and export agents as you would Power Platform solutions, you could apply proper application lifecycle management to critical agents. This is an essential piece of the puzzle if agents are going to be key parts of organization-wide work rather than personal toys. Check back here soon as I'll be publishing a full overview of how to use Copilot Studio to build declarative agents as soon as all the new options have been fully rolled out to my tenants. What we learned a few weeks ago is that autonomous capabilities will be coming to agents to allow them to be triggered outside of Microsoft 365 Copilot. I haven't gotten to play with this capability yet, but I'm excited to do so. And the fact this capability will be framed inside the same agent builder experience makes a lot of sense to me. The communication about these changes has not been as clear as it could be. If you dig into Microsoft Learn, you can find updates that show you this level of change. But the best place I found to learn about this was from comments on the recent Microsoft 365 Developers podcast by Jeremy Thake, the Microsoft Product Manager focused on the developer experience of Copilot. A link to that is below, and I suggest you check it out. It's a shame that communication about these practical changes is not more front and center, giving way instead to marketing-driven hype that leaves many of the people who need to implement these things scratching their heads in confusion. Overall, I think this is a logical set of changes and will actually serve to make Copilot extensibility more practical and usable. However, the majority of these capabilities still remain in preview to some extent or other, either as a whole or for individual features. And some of you might feel a little burned by the sudden change in direction. I know that some CIOs, IT directors, or digital transformation leads continue to look at Copilot as a product that needs to reach maturity and stability before it's ready for enterprise use. And big swings in direction like this on the stuff that tech teams may have spent time learning about and implementing aren't a good look in that discussion. However, on Microsoft's side, they actually are making changes to capabilities that never came out of preview. And those same CIOs, IT directors, and digital transformation leads should understand that preview features are not a guarantee of generally released capabilities. In this case, Microsoft heard its customers' feedback and decided to go in a different direction. And from my perspective, that direction appears to be a far more positive one. We can also debate back and forth on the issue of whether these things should be called agents. I do recommend you listen to that podcast I mentioned to hear comments from a Microsoft Insider on that issue. However, my perspective is a practical one. These need to be called something. And even if you think agents doesn't really fit, it probably fits just as well as calling absolutely everything a co-pilot. Ultimately, I think that probably the rationale for the agent's name has far more to do with keeping up with competitors' marketing messaging than any significant change in technical reality. But who cares? All of us building with this platform are the poorer for Microsoft not keeping pace with its competitors, as ultimately, it's only going to keep development focus on the things that it's able to sell. What do you think of these changes? Does this make you more or less excited about Copilot extensibility? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.